to fill the vacancies that have been created by the recent election. Yeah. This, yeah. Is just, yes. this is just simple common sense. The yeah. people should choose their elected officials, not the politicians. Yes. Yeah. This is how we have always filled vacant seats in San Jose. It's what we do at the state level as well. We choose our representatives with the vote of the people. We just went through an election in which our president talked about how democracy was on the ballot and asked us to stand up for our democratic institutions. Now we have an example of a handful of special interests that want to deny us our right to vote. There is no greater election denial than simply refusing to hold an election. Even though we had a large turnout in San Jose, we saw some of the same people supporting this election denial, attributing the outcome to turnout. Can they seriously support an electorate of just 10 people rather than the over 50,000 voters in districts eight and 10? 
Yeah. The supporters of denying a vote of the people cite the cost of an election. This is the first time in a while that many of these folks have said that we need to be fiscally prudent. <laughs> yeah. So let's welcome this new focus on spending taxpayer money wisely. But what will be the cost to taxpayers of having their voices denied, having their representatives chosen by the insiders? Our most important priority should be to empower the people, not just the insiders. Yeah. 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 And that is well worth the small amount we would spend. And let's be clear, having the voters choose their leaders will save us money in the long run. Because when we elect our leaders, they reflect our values. Just one bad vote by a council selected by insiders can cost us 10 times what this special election would cost. We talk about diversity being a value in our city. If that is going to be more than talk, we need to practice it. And having just 10 politicians vote to choose the leaders in these diverse districts is the opposite of diversity. It is divisive. We have just been through a contentious mayoral campaign. Now is the time to unite around our shared principles. And no principle is more crucial to San Jose than the foundational value that the people should choose their leaders, not the politicians. Yeah. 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 Thank you for being here. Let's make sure the council hears our voices. We want the people to decide, not the politicians. So I'm joined today by two speakers who are going to come up now and offer their remarks. First up is District 7 Council Member Elect Bien Doe. Come on up. Yeah. Thank you very much for being out here, even though it's a little cold, but we're all here for a common cause. Election is a hallmark of democracy. Right now we face a challenge to have a voice heard. My name is Bian Doan. I am your elected city official for District 7. And I'm standing here because of people have a choice. We all gather here to express the freedom of choice, the freedom of electing an official that will represent us. We ask that our council make the right decision to vote for special election. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Bian, and, and welcome to City Hall. Next up, we have the recently elected Evergreen School District Board Member-Elect, Mary Hine Paulette. Greetings, thank you for coming out. My name is Mary Hine Paulette. I am a voter and a resident in District 8. I am also a new District 8 School Board Member-Elect. As you all know, Councilwoman Arenas has recently won the supervisor seat for District 1, and soon the CD Council seat for District 8 will be vacant. There is now a choice before the CD Council. Either hold a special election for District 8, or as a council appoint an interim council person. I am here to advocate for the people of District 8. There are more than 100,000 people resign in the District 8. Those voices won't be heard if the council appoints a person. Therefore, I urge the council to do what is right and let us be heard. As a district, we can make the city choose the right decision. If you are in District 8, Please sign the petition for a special election. If enough District 8 members sign the petition, then the city must hold a special election. Let us make our voices heard. Let us speak for our right to vote. Let us 
Choose our leader. Thank you. I would like to speak a few words in Vietnamese. Tôi tên là Mary Hiền Paulette. Tôi là một cử tri và là cư dân của quận 8. Tôi cũng là một thành viên mới của hội đồng à, ủy viên giáo dục của trường Evergreen. Như quý vị đã biết, nghị viên Arenas đã giành được ghế sám giác viên cho quận 1 và hội, ghế hội đồng thành phố cho quận 8 sẽ bị bỏ trống. Hiện nay, có một sự lựa chọn trước hội đồng thành phố là tổ chức một cuộc bầu cử đặc biệt cho quận 8 hoặc hội đồng chỉ định một thành viên hội đồng tạm thời. Tôi tới đây để bên vực quyền lợi cho người dân ở quận 8. Có hơn 100 người dân đang cư ngụ ở quận 8. Nếu không có cuộc bầu cử đặc biệt thì tiếng nói của người dân quận 8 sẽ không được lắng nghe. Vì vậy, tôi kêu gọi hội đồng đã làm những gì đúng để cho tiếng nói của chúng ta được nghe. Chúng ta có thể lựa chọn cho một mình, cho mình một người xứng đáng. Nếu quý vị ở quận 8, xin quý vị cho ý kiến nhớ để có một cuộc bầu cử đặc biệt. Chúng ta hãy làm cho tiếng nói của mình được lắng nghe. Hãy kêu gọi mọi người trong quận 8 nói lên tiếng nói của mình để chúng ta tự chọn người lãnh đạo cho chính mình. Xin cảm ơn quý vị. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board member elect Mary Hine Paulette. Now we will hear from Sikh community leader Arun Singh. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Matt, for the opportunity to speak. I, my name is Arun Singh, and I live in District 10. My district produced our new mayor, and we're so glad that Matt is our new mayor. <laughs> Voting is our fundamental right, and I want to make sure we get the chance to keep that right. I want my say in who our new council member from District 10 is going to be. I don't want special interest groups to decide on our behalf who our new council member will be. Because special interest group is exactly who they are. They have special interests in their mind. They don't know what our community feels, our community uh, problems are or needs are in our community. So I want someone like Matt, who was elected by our people, someone like that to come from our district and represent us. We don't want politicians, certainly not the special interests or nor the politicians to decide who will our next council member will be. Yes, this election may cost money, but in long run, the special interest groups will cost us a lot more, just like Matt said earlier. So Matt, I agree with you and I support you and I support everyone for these special interests, for these special elections. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Mr. Arun Singh. Now we're here from District 8 Community Leader Faisal Yazadi. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Matt, for the invitation. It's so good to be here. I'm not a politician. They told me I have to keep it under 30 minutes. So it's 30 seconds. See, I told you I'm not a politician. So again, I live in District 8. I've been a resident of District 8 for about 15 years. And we had a really good representation, and that representative turned out to be good because we elected her. And going forward, we want to have the same opportunity to elect our member. Looking around, looking at this weather, feeling this weather, goes to the same weather, tells me that I'm in the state of California and not in the state of Georgia. Looking at the diverse crowd here, tells me that I'm in California, not in the state of Florida. Looking at all of us, it tells me that we are in deep south. We are in California. We are the, we are the example where voting rights matter where elections matter and where people's voices matter. So to that effect, I would request and I would ask and I would do whatever I can to make sure that proper elections are held, people's voices are heard in at least District 8 and also in District 10. So with that said, uh, again, uh, thank you for all your support and thank you, Matt, for the invitation. 
I look forward to where we do the mighty collective going forward. Thank you. Of our speakers, which is that there is no more fundamental principle in our society than that of self-determination, choosing our representatives and ensuring that they reflect our values. It is inconceivable to me that a council made up of politicians representing other districts primarily would choose who will represent the residents of District 8 and 10. And we are going to continue to organize and fight for the voices of the residents of District 8 and 10 to ensure that they are in a position and are empowered to choose their representatives at City Hall. This is an issue that will be coming before the council next week, and it is critical that our community's voice is heard. The way that we will rebuild trust in government is by increasing participation, increasing transparency, and accountability, and that starts at the ballot box with empowering the people to choose their representatives in competitive elections. I want to thank each of our speakers again for joining us. We'll, we will all stick around for a few minutes to have one-on-one -on -one interviews with those who are interested. Thank you to everyone from the press who joined us today, and this is just the beginning of our effort here. Thank you all again for being here. Thank you. Thank you.
management of past councils. In many cases, I think one could argue because council members were elected with the strong backing of interest groups that then had a little too much say over the policies that we passed. So I think having strong, independent representatives who are accountable to the community, to the voters, is critically important. And we've seen how poor decisions in the past have led us into to massive debts. Mr. Mayor, um, Albert Wright, yeah. how soon how soon would those uh, special elections take place? We, the council will have to make a decision about that, but it would be uh, presumably in, in March or April of next year, and then it followed with one in the fall. So, do you agree to all that having this acrimonious debate over you know, how to move these council seats with so many council members uh, who had opposed to you during the election? Could this set your uh, term off to a bad start? Quite the opposite. I, I think we won taking on the establishment despite being outspent by over $2 million in special interest money because we went straight to the people, we went out to the neighborhoods, we focused on the issues people care about, we demanded accountability, which is what people want. This to me is about accountability. If we want to have an accountable council, it needs to be elected by the residents of San Jose. So one of the biggest worries with doing a special election is that there's going to be a lot of time where that district will not have representation. How, how do you support? So as, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm open to an interim appointment, someone who is there to provide constituent services and do their best to communicate with the community. We've done that in the past. In fact, when Mayor Lopardo stepped into the role, we had a vacancy in District 4. Margie Matthews was appointed. I think one of the things that gave her credibility was that she pledged not to run for the seat. So she was a caretaker for some number of months while a special election was undertaken. I'm very open to that, but I certainly don't think that a two-year appointment is appropriate. That's an entire congressional term. Nancy Pelosi has to be up for election every two years. Why, why not our council members? Mayor, what can you tell us about this uh, 
totally grassroots group. In fact, everybody you saw here today are just different community members who are organizing, saying that they want to be part of a democratic process. They want to run themselves, or they want to at least have a choice over who their next representative is. And so it's a completely grassroots group coming out of the neighborhoods. And we have a vote tomorrow in the council on the parking minimum. This is going to be I want to just stay on the special election issue for now, if I can. Thank you. Do you know how yes. many signatures the petition has received so far? And how many? What I'm aware of is well over a thousand votes. I, I'm sorry, over a thousand signatures. I'm not sure that there is a threshold after which it has to be a special election. I, I heard that comment made. But you don't think it's... I don't think that there's a number after which we have to have one. Okay. It's a, it's, the, the city charter is pretty clear that the council has discretion. Okay. And uh, what's the most important issue that some say city has? You think? Well, I think the big, the three big issues right now are street homelessness, public safety, and and blight, frankly. And, and we've got to clean up our city and get back to basics. At the end of the day, I think our council will be focused on those issues if it's truly accountable to the people and, and what they want to see happen. Which is why I feel so strongly about having special elections. Yeah, a lot of We're going to do Spanish. Okay. Let me do. Thank you. 